Hey everybody, my name is Reed Fisher. I am a marathon runner for Tin Man Elite and Adidas, and today we are gonna be taking a look at all these shoes and where they fit in my training lineup. So I kind of break running shoes into, we'll call it three categories. Helps me just kind of think about which shoe I'm gonna to wear to what workout, and then each of these shoes kind of falls within the spectrum of, okay, this is an easy day mileage shoe, what role will it fill? This is a workout shoe, what role will that fill? And this is a race day shoe, what role will that fill? So it's kind of easy to think about running shoes as just running shoes and, and any shoe will get the job done for any sort of workout or training, but you know, there's definitely some nuance to it and some things that are gonna work better for different sorts of workouts. So I'll kind of break that down for you all. Um, if you watched last year's video, there's a lot of the models will be the same, but there's been a lot of change in the Adidas tech over the past 12 months. So I'll kind of break down each shoe individually, where it fits into my training lineup, and how things have changed from last year if you haven't gotten the new models yet. So we'll start on kind of the slow end. So these Solar Glides are the shoes that I do probably 95% of my easy mileage days in. It's basically gonna be a workhorse shoe for me, really nice comfy cushioning with the Adidas Boost in the heel and throughout the forefoot as well, but then it's just some blown TPU up front. Really, it's just a workhorse shoe for me. It really feels like a shoe that I could do pretty much everything in and just not get injured, which is the biggest thing for any runner of any ability level. Not a whole lot to report here. This has been a really comparable model for Adidas year over year for probably the last five or six years now. Just slight changes to the upper and the tongue system, the lacing system, um, but by and large it's going to feel the same as the Sword Glide has for the past few years. If you haven't worn that, you'll know what to expect. If you haven't, this is going to be just a great neutral daily trainer shoe that can handle, you know, I get usually four to five hundred miles out of a pair of these. So for most runners that looks like six months to a year. For me that's around a month of good training out of them. Um, and then moving to the right, we've got the Supernova. This is the shoe that probably two thirds of our team has turned to as their daily trainer. A lot of the guys are doing a little bit less volume than I am weekly, so something that's a little bit lighter weight and snappier feels better for them since they don't need to protect their legs quite as much, not as much fatigue. So Supernova, um, kind of similar construction to the Solar Glide. We've got boost back here in the, the heel just to kind of absorb some of that deep impact and get some good longevity out of the shoe. And then midsole and forefoot up here is gonna be bounce foam. That's a different compound than is in the forefoot of the Solar Glide here, but still a nice, just kind of classic shoe rubber. Um, a little bit more firm, I've found, than the Solar Glide overall is the Supernova. But same thing, you know, this is gonna be a shoe that'll last you easily three to 400 miles, no problem. Great lightweight trainer for anybody who wants to feel a little bit more poppy on their easy runs, um, but not quite as resilient and not quite as soft and squishy as the Solar Glides will be. Moving on, so this is gonna be one that's changed a good bit from last year. This is the SL22.0. They increased the stack height a little bit and just made it a little bit more, I guess, casual of a shoe rather than it was a little more performance oriented I found last year. So now it's kind of been a lightweight trainer to longer workout where I'm trying to protect my legs. This might be a good fast long run shoe for a lot of people. Full light strike all in here, not Light Strike Pro, so not the super shoe foam that I'll talk about in a little bit, but much, much lighter than the Boost Foam or the Bounce Foam that are in the Solar Glide and the Supernova. So it definitely feels a lot, lot lighter weight, but it still has the nice thicker stack height, um, nice and flexible, good shoe for somebody who's doing maybe a long tempo or some, like I said, a faster long run with some quality in it, something like that, or for somebody who's doing pretty light weekly mileage and just wants to feel fast when they go out for you know an easy five mile jog around the neighborhood something like that so that's the sl22.0 moving to the right this is the shoe that i've been wearing for pretty much all my workouts lately this is the boston 10 so this is also a huge change in the lineup from last year last year's boston was probably about half the thickness of this stack height wise in the midsole here um, and was boost foam and and regular TPU, now we've got white strikes. There's this white foam, and then the gold metallic, this is gonna be the White Strike Pro. So this is Adidas's super foam, super, super bouncy and responsive. This is something that just really makes you feel a little poppy. It's a heavier shoe than I typically go for for a workout shoe, but really, really gives you that response. And I'm in the middle of a marathon training block right now, building up for the Chicago Marathon, so this has been a good shoe for me to get in some good speed work 
relatively speaking, for marathon training um, and, and save my legs from feeling quite as beat up if I was running something like the Adios. So yeah, this is the Boston 10 TME edition, so Tim Manoe edition. This is the shoe that we made with Adidas, our team did. Uh, Sam Parsons, my teammate, was heavily involved with the Audi Zero team, kind of bringing the shoe to life, and you know, it's been cool to see over the last 18 months this transition from sketches on an iPad that Sam and I were kind of just erasing things and moving stuff around to see what would play and what wouldn't, uh, all the way into this final shoe that I'm holding in my hands and have been wearing on my feet for the last few months. You know, I think having your own signature shoe as a, a running team is something that's pretty rare and hard to come by, so it's been a huge sort of honor and just privilege for us to work with the Adidas team to bring this to life. Uh, this shoe is still available on TimManelyShop.com, so if you want a pair of these, you can grab them there. Yeah, really nice shoe. It's a great update I found. I was a little bit worried about it at first, just since the Boston was a shoe that I did a ton of my training in before they made this big update, um, and I was worried that they would have kind of changed too much in it, but I find that it fills the same role in my training, you know, good for tempo runs, longer interval training, things like that. Not quite as poppy or lightweight, but still you feel like you're moving quick. Um, also has the full continental outsole, so that's gonna make it a lot more durable. And then also it'll have the energy rods in the midsole. Basically those are just anatomically based carbon rods that will give you some extra snap as you're coming up out of your transition and kind of spring you forward like we've come to know and love with most of the carbon plated racing shoes that a lot of us have been wearing for the past few years. So this is kind of a tuned down version of the Audios Pro, which we'll come to in a little bit. Then we've got the Audi Zero Audio 6. So this is another one of Adidas's kind of just staple workhorse flats. The Audios was uh, the shoe that Dennis Cometo set the marathon world record in, I don't know, maybe eight years ago at this point. And that was kind of the gold standard for a while until people figured out the stack height and the carbon plates and the super foams and things like that. So this is kind of, Adidas' step in the next direction for the Adios it used to be, again, probably half this thickness midsole wise and lots of boost foam in it. They've done away with all the boost in this shoe. It is now Light Strike in the heel and Light Strike Pro. This is kind of lighter tan material in the forefoot. So, again, fills the same role as the old Adios in my rotation. Great for, you know, some track work or just like faster fartlet kind of sessions on the roads. This will be the shoe that, you know, when I'm more in track season, I'll turn to this a lot more than I would the Boston. Really lightweight, really poppy. I've worn the shoe for a few sessions since they updated it and really, really enjoyed it. Again, it has that Adios feel that anybody who's an Adios purist has come to know and love. Um, really poppy and has that same kind of torsion system, wishbone style here in the forefoot that's gonna give you some nice rigidity. So this colorway I think is still on adidas.com. Just kind of some cool hits here with the rose embroidery. So, just kind of a fun colorway there. So this will be the Avanti Pro. This is the replacement to Adidas's old track spike, the Avanti, which again, you know, I think the common theme here is Adidas is kind of moving away from boost foam, apart from the Supernova and the Solar Glide, everything is totally void of boost foam, which is, you know, definitely a new direction for anybody who's an Adidas purist for the past decade or so. And I found it's really great, the, the movement away from boost. It's a little bit lighter weight. The Light Strike Pro is a lot snappier and just gives you a butt, much better energy return. So that's been a welcome change for me. I know I still like the boost in my training shoes just because it gives me a little bit more cushioning and a lot more life out of the shoes, which is great. But for something where you're trying to run fast and feel good, the Light Strike Pro has been a great change for me. So the Avanti Pro, it's got full white strike in it, so all super foam, really, really snappy and poppy. And then it's got these energy rods in the midsole, you can kind of see them poking through there. So that's going to be, again, just that anatomical rods that shape, you know, mirror basically the anatomy of your, of your metatarsals and kind of allow you to articulate rather than just a straight carbon plate. You know, when you're turning on the track or taking a sharp turn on the roads, your foot wants to roll with the shoe kind of over but a plate doesn't really allow for that. So this is Adidas' solution to give you some play in the forefoot, but still give you that kind of carbon plated spring forward. So this is a shoe I haven't really worn a ton yet since I'm, again, in a marathon block, not a lot of speed sessions that dictate spikes, um, but I've thrown them on here and there, and every time I've done it, it's made me really excited for track season next spring. I think it's a shoe that a lot of Adidas pros have been looking forward to for a long time, and now that it's kind of hit the public market and will definitely be more widely available next spring come track season. I think it's a shoe that a lot of people are gonna really enjoy. So this would be the shoe that I do pretty much everything on the track, speed work, you know, 10K pace and down. If I'm on the track, I'll be wearing these. And then we'll swing all the way back over here and come into the marathon racing shoes. So we'll start with the Audios Pro 2. 
This is the shoe that I'll be doing all of my racing in on the roads. So I've got US 10 mile champs coming up here this weekend and then the Chicago Marathon on October 10th. I'll race both those races in this shoe. This is the successor to the original Audios Pro um, that got a ton of success last year. You know, men's and women's half marathon world records really even the playing field for Adidas athletes on the road scene and just really was a, a joy I think for a lot of people you know recreational runners all the way up to pros I think people found the shoe a lot poppier and snappier than a lot of the the other super shoes on the market with the stack height you know you're definitely saving your legs so that you feel good 40k into a marathon and you can push that last mile or so but it also gives you a lot more response I know a lot of people have been turning to this shoe for 10 mile to half marathon work um, just because it has a lot more pop to it than some of the other super shoes on the market, which I've absolutely loved. Not a ton to comment on compared to last year's Audios Pro. Same stack height, same, you know, metatarsal rods there with the energy rods, same basic structure as last year's Audios Pro. Stellar mesh upper, which is gonna be the same as last year as well. They just kind of restyled it. The biggest aesthetic change will be this cutout on the medial side here. That's basically just to save some weight. Uh, we added some continental rubber up here on the forefoot, just down that big toe area. That was a high wear area for a lot of people that people were burning through them and the continental rubber weighs a bit more. So to kind of offset that weight cost, they cut out this here just to save some grams. Um, I've been talking to our guy, Nick Roche, who's the, the designer of this shoe, works with the team at, at Audi Zero, and he tells me it's a good improvement over the uh, the Audios Pro One, which is good. You know, every time a new model comes out, we will hope that it's gonna make us faster and make us better runners overall, and this shoe definitely does that. So it's the Audios Pro Two. And then this guy is gonna be something that I cannot race in, but the general public technically can. This is the Prime X. So this shoe does not meet World Athletics shoe regulations. It's got too much stack height. This has 50 millimeters of stack height in the heel compared to 39.9 in the Audios Pro. Uh, World Athletics says 40 millimeters is as high as you can go for them to be race legal if you're racing in a competitive setting where there's a shoe check. So for me, that becomes an issue, so I will not be able to race in these, unfortunately, but the Prime X is a specimen. There's no other shoe on the market like it. It's completely in its own sort of niche, which is a ton of fun. You know, I've thrown these on for a few jogs and it just feels you know, almost unbelievable how different this shoe is even to the Audios Pro, even though it looks so comparable, adding, you know, 20% more stack height is just, makes it a whole new shoe. So this one structurally is gonna be quite different from the Audios Pro. This has, it's basically a Big Mac shoe, so it's Light Strike Pro, Energy Rods, Light Strike Pro again, another set of Energy Rods, and then Light Strike Pro. <laughs> um, so, twice the amount of rods. So again, that kind of accommodates for the, the thicker stack height. Just an insane shoe. Um, I think they kind of just let Nick and the Audi Zero team go wild on this one and then have some fun and make a shoe that they were just like, we'll see, you know, we'll see if it even works. Um, so I think they had a ton of fun with it. And I think that shows through in the shoe. Uh, you put it on and it's just like a shoe that makes you smile. I'm smiling just talking about it. Somebody wants to try everything and anything, maybe get a little bit more competitive advantage over the marathon and just a hometown race or something like that rather than a world major. This is a, a shoe you could look into. And that's pretty much the whole lineup. Um, yeah, so, you know, I think the big favorites for me are gonna be the Solar Glide for my daily training, the Boston 10 for most of my workouts, and then the Audios Pro 2 for my racing and the workouts that I'm not wearing to Boston, a lot of times I'll be in the Audios Pro. Um, those are the ones that I kind of gravitate towards as a half marathon marathon person. So if you're somebody who's training for a world major or you know a marathon of your own, those would be maybe the three that I would start with here. If you're somebody who's more of a high school athlete, volume's a little lower, you know, you're doing more speed work and things like that, I would say Supernova, Audios, and Avanti Pro will be a great lineup for you. Kind of ticks the box of lightweight trainer, solid flat and then a good racing spike. But really there's something in the Adidas lineup for everybody, which I hope is the takeaway here for y'all. Um, there really is a shoe that fits pretty much every need you could ask for. It's a fun lineup. I've enjoyed talking about this year's shoes. It's been a huge overhaul from last year by and large. So it's cool to kind of get the product in and ask questions for the designers and kind of get a, a new sense of what works for what and what doesn't. Um, my Instagram DMs are always open, you know, feel free to shoot me questions about specific shoes or just 
how I decide what to wear for what kind of workout in general or really anything. You know, if you have footwear questions, I'm pretty, uh, I like to nerd out about this stuff for sure, um, as I'm sure plenty of people have already picked up on. And if I don't know the answers, I can definitely get in touch with the folks at Adidas who will know those answers for you. So yeah, give me a, give me a shout, let me know which shoes you're rocking in your lineup and, and what your favorite model of, of this year has been so far for you.